Good morning to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Wednesday, July the 27th, 2016. Hey, all of a sudden we have something to talk about, so I thought I would take a look at what's going on with what we now call Invest Area 96L. And real quick, just to recap, what does that mean? You're going to hear that often with these systems that are in their formative stages. And that's exactly what this is for, the naming designation that the National Hurricane Center gives to areas of interest or suspect areas of weather, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they give the numbers 90 through 99 and then the letter L for Atlantic. Sometimes you'll see AL uh, designated like A Invest AL 96 or whatever, uh, but we just simply call it 96L or what have you. And they go through those numbers 90 through 99 and they start over again. It's sort of the first step in the investigation process to assign more resources to the system for monitoring satellite floaters and computer models designated specifically for that system. And it's just a way to keep up with what's what instead of calling everything an area of disturbed weather. It's uh, just an easier way to keep up with it, I suppose. So that's why we refer to it in the hurricane tracking world as 96L. So here it is. Uh, the current location right here just coming off the coast of Africa fairly low latitude here just a little bit north of 10 degrees north latitude and then the potential development area extends out into the main development region of the open tropical Atlantic from there looking at a satellite picture this is a wonderful shot I really like this uh, wide section of the globe encompassing most of the continent of Africa here at least the tropical regions and the Sahara northern Africa etc and there's a couple of things that stand out here one of which is the obvious tropical wave energy associated with 96 L but also notice there's another piece of uh, energy here and a third one back over eastern Africa and each of these has sort of separated into their own entities right they are their own little pockets we don't just see a glob of clouds here all lined up each one of these represents uh, energy in the atmosphere, these waves of low pressure along the easterly trades, and those are going to make their way out into the Atlantic as we get into August. Each one of these, think about these as looking into the future. Okay, each one of these systems is the future weather uh, because these waves of low pressure will make their way into the Atlantic. They're not going to go up here or go up here. They come this way, embedded in the easterly jet that comes off Africa. I can show you that in a moment. So this is the area that we're interested in now, 96L, uh, decent anticyclone sitting over this. That means high pressure fanning out in the upper atmosphere. We don't have wind uh, coming across like this, what we call wind shear going against the system, which is moving this way. And we don't have that right now. So far, it's fairly favorable. And I'll be able to show you that in an analysis in just a moment. The infrared satellite with colorized added to it uh, coming from the University of Wisconsin site. Limited convection overall, but that's expected. The wave, about 10, 10 millibar low pressure associated with this easterly wave. And it's going to have a tough road ahead. Not too excited about this developing. And I say excited, you know what I mean by that. Um, and I'll show you why. You know, this is probably just the first of several to come. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have to watch this. And I'll explain that too as well. You see the other system back here over interior Africa on the eastern side of the longitude system, right? So there's the prime meridian, and then everything on the eastern side, you refer to it as 10 degrees east, 20 degrees east, etc. So we do have a tropical wave sitting in here between the um, prime meridian zero and then 10 degrees east, and then one much farther to the east than that, all the way over to 30 east, between 30 and 40. So these have several days to traverse the continent, but again, these are seedlings that will pop out over the Atlantic over the course of the next couple of weeks as the hurricane season begins to shift into a more climatologically favored window. It's a natural progression of things. So let's take a look at the Saharan air layer analysis. I've been pointing this out that this is getting weaker and weaker as the days go by. And you can see now all the way up here to 20 north and south of um, 10 degrees north, almost down to the equator. Uh, very little Saharan air influence, still some fairly dry air out to the west, 
But overall, the pattern is definitely changing, and things are starting to become more favorable, and hence the outlook for this system, which is roughly centered right in here, and uh, we'll be moving off into the Atlantic, and we'll see what happens from there. Looking at the sea surface temperatures, I wrote about this in my blog post this morning. Typically, 26 degrees Celsius or roughly 79 degrees Fahrenheit around there is what we need for tropical cyclone development in the warm months. You know, we had Hurricane Alex that developed over colder water back in January of all months. That's a story for another day as to how that could even happen. But in the hurricane season, you typically need these warm water temperatures. And we call these lines of equal temperature isotherms, or line of equal temperature. And there's the 26 degrees Celsius line right there. Our system is sitting right over here, the center of it. So water temperature is definitely warm enough in its path. Uh, so that's not going to be an inhibiting factor. In fact, uh, this 28 degrees Celsius isotherm through here indicates around 82 Fahrenheit. So definitely warm enough along the path of this system. In fact, the departures from normal, I show the NOAA NESDIS map twice a week. This is the National Hurricane Center Reynolds methodology. What does that mean? These are just different methodologies using different climatological backgrounds. Sea surface temperature states over a certain period of time. It's too much to get into today, but this is more of a, a longer term average, like over the last seven days, I believe. And you can see that pretty much anything on the right hand side of the scale and that's what this comes down to is, okay, well, what does it show? Well, everything on the right-hand side of the scale is warmer than normal, and everything on the left-hand side is colder than normal. And you can make the argument that you could take these two squares here and say, well, that's roughly average, and then everything to the right and left of that would be above or below, respectively. So with all that being said, check it out. Most of the Atlantic Basin has pockets of warmer than normal water temperatures. You can see these... Uh, different contours in here indicating you know a half a degree to almost a degree Celsius right there one Celsius above normal definitely a degree Celsius more than that up against the mid-atlantic but this is not what we're worried about right now but the point is this is not moving into areas of blue and I think you can clearly see that as well as I can and so this tropical wave does have some factors going for it uh, the warm water temperatures also the lack of upper level wind shear, not a problem right now. Uh, this is the west coast of Africa right here. There's Cape Verde or Dakar right there. And then you come around uh, to the south here, the um, Sierra Leone. Uh, hard to pick out exactly where these countries are, but you get the idea that the Sahel region here in Africa, definitely fertile right now with these pockets of energy, these tropical waves. And then there, is that easterly jet coming through and then it kind of rounds out and becomes this anticyclone upper air high pressure fanning out clockwise very favorable this is not going this way all right so this is the african easterly jet coming across from the east to the west energizing these systems pushing them along and uh, sometimes they can go a little too fast and you get easterly shear that certainly is a consideration but overall, the shear values out here, I mean, five knots to, you know, ten knots at the most underneath this area of anticyclonic flow aloft, basically an umbrella of protection. So that's favorable for the system. So will it develop? Well, the computer models are limited right now with the uh, analysis of this system as uh, specifically. We'll get more of this as time goes on. Remember, this was just designated this morning. Um, so we'll see what happens with it. Here it is located. If you want to pin down a center right here just off the coast of Africa, uh, there's Cape Verde right there. These are the Cape Verde Islands. So again, it's at a fairly low latitude, roughly 10 degrees north, I guess it would be. And then a limited number of these numeric models, simple models, uh, carrying it off to the west and west-northwest with time. The intensity models, what few there are right now, show general strengthening overall we'll see if that happens maybe they're a little too aggressive hard to say I mean it is late July it's not quite the peak of the season yet obviously so maybe these are a little bit too bullish but 
It's interesting that they're not flat or they don't go down. Uh, generally, this indicates low wind shear, warm temperatures in the ocean, upper ocean heat content, not too shabby, that kind of thing. And I mean, clearly, you can see a couple of the models indicating that this becomes a hurricane. We won't go that far. Uh, it's just guidance here. That's exactly what it says right there. Intensity guidance, something to look at and take into consideration. Uh, looking at the ensemble prediction. Now, this is interesting because this takes a whole bunch of different models, like an ensemble. Think about one model, like the GFDL or just the GFS operational, as individual members of an orchestra. Okay, and so by themselves, one of them might be the flute, or the other one might be the cello, and they may do well on their own. Maybe they have the main melody and it makes sense, but they might be playing other parts. And you're like, well, it really doesn't fit in too well, but when you put it all together with the rest of the symphony or the orchestra, yes, the ensemble group then sounds absolutely fantastic. And I think that analogy works very well here, that one model by itself may have the wrong output or the wrong input going in. You never know. So you get everything together and look at them as a group. You get sort of an ensemble mean or an average, and you look at how all of that works out, the clustering of tracks and densities of formations in certain areas, and it all boils down to a very pretty map. I love maps. I'm a geography degree holder, so maps make the most sense to me, especially when they show something, what we call a thematic map. And that's what we have right here. And you can see that the ensemble forecast INSEP ensemble right here, probability of tropical cyclone genesis or something forming. Uh, some of these numbers up here are on the order of about 60% or so right here in the main development region over the next several days with varying tracks as you can see out. These really don't matter too much. And we're also starting to see a little bit of energy maybe trying to come together in the Western Caribbean. So the bottom line here, it's time to start watching the tropics. I mean, I didn't necessarily think it would be today. When I did my outlook yesterday, I figured it would be a few more days to maybe a couple of weeks before things get going. Now, that's not to say that this system is going to develop. I don't know if it will. It has a shot. Some of the major global models like the European ECMWF and the GFS, not real enthusiastic about this system developing. The thermodynamic structure of the Atlantic Basin still quite, not quite there maybe. But the tropical wave energy doesn't just go away. It's going to be out there if it doesn't develop in the coming days. It may be something that we have to watch down the road as it gets into the western Atlantic where the water temperatures are exceptionally warm and the atmospheric conditions may be more hospitable for development. We'll just have to wait and see. So something to keep an eye on, Invest 96L. In the Eastern Pacific, nothing really to talk about in terms of land threats. Frank is dying away over the cooler water, well off the Baja, and another system trying to develop maybe off the, uh, well off the coast of Mexico. But again, no threats to Mexico nor Hawaii, so we'll focus on the Atlantic Basin for the time being. All right, well, that's it for me for today. If I get anything else... Before the end of the day that warrants another video blog, I'll post something, but I don't think that will be necessary. So um, have a great rest of your Wednesday. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and I'll definitely be back with more for you tomorrow.